Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have noticed that we need to land on the moon one more time before tackling the far side of the moon landing contract. And so I'm going to pick that up and prepare a rocket for that. It's not going to be too dissimilar from our previous mission, but maybe I'll try out the RZ-20 Hydrolox engines instead of the large engines, just to give them more of a workout. Uh, speaking of which, though, uh, we do have uh, at our hangar the Maya being built and that will be done in a month and then we'll be able to do an uncrewed flight test of it that's just to see how it flies and I'm still tempted to put a canard on it uh, because the center of lift is pretty far back from the center of mass and for a regular plane that's not a problem but for one that re-enters we don't want too much of a discrepancy so we'll see about that uh, the flight test will, really won't answer that question too much, and we'll have to think about that. Uh, but we've got a lot of uh, research queued. We do have our commsats pending. We were constructing those, uh, the bundle of those at ELA-4, and that looks like the next thing that we're going to do. And then we'll probably... I, I don't know if we need to move our people from ELA-4 to the hangar. I think the hangar's got to be done pretty soon anyway. But actually, at ELA-4, why don't I start constructing our lunar landing mission while this is rolling out? Alright, so this will be the Looney 3, which we'll be trying to land on the moon. It's a similar setup, except I've reduced the size of the control core. It used to be a 5-ton core because it was also controlling the Large 2 stage. But now we don't have that because we're going to be using the RZ-20s, these Hydrolox engines. And I have tilted them so that they'll be pointing through the center mass in case one fails. Uh, well, ideally. The center mass, of course, moves around. Um, so, we don't need the large stages anymore, or Gamma 2 stages. We just have this one-ton probe, and so it only has a one-ton controller. We have newer solar panels on top. Uh, the engines are still the same, but it has a lot more delta V since it's not carrying a heavy controller. And we'll capture into orbit and then land with it. And, yeah, that's the plan, but there's, uh, well, there's a few catches, and one catch is that we actually do have to upgrade the GSC at ELA-4, so apparently it doesn't have the hydrogen, so that's important. Another little thing that I've done is that we had a 40 meter height limit, so I've tucked in the engines. <laughs> I mean, on a normal rocket, they'd be tucked in like this anyway, but... Yeah, we just had to do that to meet the height limit, and we do. So, yeah, that is the Looney 3 on the Deneb H. That's what I've called it when we do have the Hydrolox upper stage. And I guess we'll call it HA3 when it has the Ariana boosters on it, or something like that. Uh, we'll cross that road when we get to it. Uh, so, this should be interesting. Are we previously for the lunar lander missions had to have boosters but and use ELA-5 but since we have the hydrolock stage we don't need to worry about that hopefully all right so let's upgrade the pad costs a bit okay maybe I had just forgotten that I had done it for ELA-5 already or something I don't know okay building one Oh, it's got to be a Christmas Day launch. Hate to have them working on Christmas, but here we go. So, can we launch these three commsats? Let's find out. Insufficient avionics. Uh, hopefully it'll go straight up for a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, alright. SAS, obviously we can't activate. Throttle up. Okay, that doesn't matter. Um, oh, we'll prepare this. Ignition. And launch. Okay, now it's happy. Don't know how I got over... Right? Uh, yeah, I don't know how I got over the mass limit, but maybe a last minute addition. Maybe the fairings, I don't know. Well, it's bright enough that we can see the stripe today. 
All right, should be past Max Q now. Everything looking fine so far. Okay, booster seven. Okay, separation, fairings. Oh, we're starting off quite a bit heavier this time. Hmm. We'll have to change out that core. Okay. Well, it's an interesting sort of stack on top of it. Oh, we're in space. Some guy extend everything. I have action grouped it all. We're taking no chances. Intentionally boosting up like this. Okay, well, we, we actually want to get rid of that stage, so... Alright, separation. Well, we've got a tenuous line back, but I don't see a line up. So, you know what? I'm gonna cut it for now. Uh, there is a Deneb Geosat up there. We should be able to communicate through it. It seems like we can. Okay, uh, we can continue burning then. Yeah, we've got the Geosat connection. Vital for these, of course. Okay, I wanted about 4,000 kilometers in plan for that, so we'll just leave it be like that and see what we can boost them up to. Probably I should have had a two hour period or a three hour period and boosted them up to some multiple of that, like a multiple of three, but we will see. So we're going to point prograde first and then shoot one of them off, making sure it's the top one. Okay, a couple, a couple, okay, yes, um, prograde, oh, all right, hit the stage, all that, okay, ignition, I guess we should wait closer to apoapsis, maybe three hour orbits will be fine, seems like that's what we're gonna get here, a little bit over since we... So about 3 hours 15 minutes, maybe. Okay, something like that. Alright, we use practically all the fuel, uh, except for what we need to turn with. So, pointing at the sun. Okay, and spinning. And turning off the avionics. Okay, is the other thing still in the... Uh, no, of course it's not in render range. Okay. So then this back will go around. And at that point, we'll be an hour ahead of the other one. Well, an hour and five minutes or so. It might not be high enough to actually clear the surface to get a line between them. But functionally, it should be okay. We probably wanted four in this low in orbit. Okay, next one. Oh, these are in such low orbits, they would deviate over time anyway. Oh, we used up all of the fuel. Well, we should still have enough for the RCS to point us. It's because we're carrying the decoupler. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, last one. Well, it's certainly not in the same place as the other two. One's there, one's there, one's here. Grade. Just to save fuel in it, we're gonna use this stage to boost it up a little bit first. This time we can just separate by regular staging. Separation. And go. Okay, and that's spun up with a vengeance. And avionics shut down. Well, we might as well deorbit the stage that we used. So, that's at least one piece of space junk we will have gotten rid of. Alright, so three satellites properly deployed, in theory. And we will see whether they help out or not in the future. Okay, and now for something completely different. And 
rather more dangerous, we have a plane to test. So let us launch. Uh, no crew, that is fine. Okay, well, this side's brighter, so we'll go with this view. Doesn't look perfect, but it's a start. Okay, atmospheric autopilot on. And jet engines. Go. This might take a while. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh. Okay. I think I forgot to fix the landing gear on it. The landing gear had a problem. Yeah, that was my fault. I was supposed to fix the landing gear, I probably didn't. Whoops. <laughs> okay, alright, alright. Um, we'll build another one. Alright, so it's gonna take some time to make the new one, but we have 150 applicants, so I think I'll just hire them as engineers. And yeah, that would speed things up a bit and let's see all right and then we can add all those there oh I, I only 336 engineers can work on Maya great okay fine 336 no point adding more then we'll send the others to other things ELA-4 is building the new Lunar Lander. That doesn't seem to have any limits. We've got a thousand sitting at ELA-5 waiting for something to do though. 1,041 now. We should probably put them to some work, huh? Maybe... well, that would be a pretty big Mars mission. But yeah, maybe a Mars mission. Uh, we could uh, build those two Mars missions, the same that we launched to Venus. And hopefully that'll be alright. So I've queued up the two Mars Orbiter missions, but we don't have much money left, and we're currently losing it. On all fronts. In theory, something should be giving us funds, right? This one's gonna be going down soon, but it's practically at its peak. I guess we, uh, got a drop off from this one. But it still should be giving us money. We need to get to the first EVA. This is going up, but... Not quickly enough to save us, and we don't have enough program slots. Um, I don't suppose one of these people can trade some of our reputation for money. Anybody? We could have hired uh, Arthur Cleaver here, um, or Val Cleaver, as he is more appropriately no uh, known. Uh, we would have sped up our integration of kerosene HTP propellant rockets vessel integration roll on roll back we don't use much solid propellants so that's okay no we'll, we'll just hire him uh, since it doesn't seem to cost anything right okay we have Arthur Cleaver but it might be too late we should have had Arthur Cleaver a long time ago <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Maybe our budget will be happier if we time warp. No, it's definitely going down. Facility. Okay, maybe we can close down some. Let's, uh, dismantle mini pad one. Yeah. Um, let's scrap the Thorish rockets. And dismantle ELA-1. I don't know what ELA-1 is doing, but... Well, it says reconditioning infinity. Okay. We need to send some staff over to it. Oh, well, that doesn't help. hasn't helped much. But let's see if we can close down ELA-1. I don't think it's that expensive. It's all these scientists and engineers we might need to fire. Okay, let's dismantle this one. Now that it's reconditioned, we can get some money back for the planes, but I feel like the Smithsonian might be interested. Or whatever the European equivalent is. I don't... ELA-2 can still launch Ariana rockets. We'll scrap this Atlas, though. Well, our 
change in funds is not quite as bad as it used to be. We'll scrap this Dionysus pod for now. Well, the thing is, our engineers didn't cost so much before. I guess that's because they're actually working on stuff on ELA-5. I didn't need those Duna rockets that quickly. Yeah, it's much cheaper if we just remove them. We don't have to fire them. We just have to remove them. We don't need those rockets that quickly. We can have just like 400 people on this pad. It's cheaper not to have them work at all. Okay, now we're making plenty of money. And, you know, we'll still make the Mars window of plenty of time to spare with those two. Oh, we need to pay attention to our Venus missions. Okay, it's still spinning along. We'll activate avionics now. Okay, 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 don't wobble. Since these are orbiter missions, we will want them to be on in communication with Earth at periapsis. But we'll adjust that when we get there. So, in 79 days, we'll take a look at it again. Science around here is all done. Okay, let's hop to Eve 3. Alright, time for this one to do its mid-course correction. We'll have to turn on avionics, of course. Oh, that's pretty close. Well, that's about it. But, of course, again, we have to turn back to the sun. And so we might as well get rid of that. This one's on a crash course. So we better have communication when we get there. Adding SOI change alarm. They'll be arriving pretty close to each other. We'll have to watch out for that. And shutting down avionics. Okay. It's all set. And let us continue. Well, the Maya will still take until April 4th. But it looks like we're going to get our Looney 3 pretty soon. So we're going to try to make a better landing on the moon. And we're going to try to do it on the far side. We've got to try to make use of that satellite that we had placed and see if that works out for us. Though it's been a while since we actually put that satellite where it is. Alright. And it looks like we're going to be heading north. So SAS on, throttle up, ignition. We've got four engines. And launch. Time I will go to the inclination. So there's another test of our Hydrolox engines, and we'll see how it goes. We got lucky the first time, as you know. Eventually, test flight will get us. Okay, separation. customary tilt. <laughs> this one takes extra time to start. Okay, fairings. Okay. Hydrolox time. And go. Oh, still two of them. Again, they'll have to restart. Inclination practically perfect right now. Okay, 282 by 176, let's just say. And, yep, well, they worked for what they needed to do, and we have just enough for the transfer to the moon. So, practically perfect. So, basically, the transfer capacity of this right now is one ton to the moon. Uh, yep. Not, you know, spectacular, but it's something. 
for a 180 ton rocket. Okay, that's crashing into it. We do not want to do that this time. That's okay. In four days, that's a per pretty normal time. So, we have a bounce signal through which one? Can you tell me? I swear, every time it's like a different place I have to hover to get the information on which satellite's actually doing the business. Okay, let's just see. I think it's Looney 2 again, though. Why is Looney 2 the best? Well, I don't know. We might have a link through Looney 2. It seems to be in the right position and we seem to have a line, but we do also have a line to the Geosat up there. The node, maneuver node, is on the opposite side of the planet. Over there, we've got a bunch of things up here, but those are all old ones. But there's a Geosat here that should be able to do it. Plus, well, the new sats are going to go around a little bit faster. Whoa, 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 I, I time warped too much. It'll be fine. We have comms. Hurry. We're late, we're late. Go. Still got two engines. Next thing is just a 3.6 kilonewton thruster, so no problems there. Well, they're looking good, but we've still only collected about a thousand data units. Lots, lots more improvement to be had there. Okay, that should be good enough for now. Okay, we'll separate. That wasn't too bad. Probably we'll have a line back at Periapsis. We do have a line to the Geosat. Alright. Retrograde. We're pretty close to retrograde already. And... Capture Burn. We should have oodles of Delta V right now. We have captured. Geosat is right there. It should be in a good position for relaying us if we wanted to land right now. A little bit high on this side, but we'll bring it down. Okay, that'll do. Got nearly 2,800 meters per second to land, so that's luxurious this time. Now, far side. I mean, of course, we don't have the contract, so it's not enforcing the far side thing. We just want to test that we can do that ahead of the actual far side contract. We do have the line to Geosat, and it is in theory relaying us right now. And this is the far side of the moon. And there's light too. So. I think we should try it. Okay, initial landing burn. Or setting up the landing. Can't get more far side than this. Well, that's extra setup. We're still pretty high. This is definitely not a normal low approach kind of lunar landing. Okay, I want to land somewhere around here. Otherwise, it's not far side enough. Okay. It's all looking pretty bumpy, though. There's that pit right there that I don't want to end up in. <laughs> um, this one doesn't look great either. Sort of an interesting place to do science, I suppose. Okay, ignition. It's gonna be slopey. Maybe I should have tried for right in there, but that's going too far. I'll sell for some sort of soft landing this time. Thank you. Okay, staging. 
That was vigorous. I could probably get myself over to some other location with a thousand meters per second, like in there, but again, don't want to fool around too much. Too bad we can't land and then pick up the far side contract and land again with this because this could probably do a second landing, but of course it has to be a new vessel. Infinite ignition time. Okay, we're on the ground. <laughs> Definitely spamming those ignitions like they're RCS, which they are. They're basically RCS. Transmit science. Well, eventually we'll transmit some science, right? We've got the solar panels on top. We can shut down the avionics. Should actually recharge. Yeah, it's recharging. Okay, we transmitted the telemetry. Midlands. It's always Midlands. Shouldn't it be like far side Midlands? How is it going to know that it's a far side or not? Okay, we got all the science. So, should we go somewhere else? <laughs> um, I don't even know if that's got to be a different biome. I doubt it. Ought to be, but I'm not sure. Should we just find out? Maybe we should just find out. Alright, let, let's try and go over there. Whoa. Oh, oh, kill rotate. Oh, RCS. Eek. Wrong way. Wrong way. This was not the most efficient ascent for this purpose. Yeah, it's just Midlands. <laughs> it's always just Midlands. Uh, not exactly the bottom. Oh, oh, something blew up. Oh, maybe it'll slide to the bottom. That's fine. Eh, it's still Moon's Midlands, though. It's not worth it. Oh, well. We're there. Alright. Well, we did it. Back to Space Center. So we'll actually pick up the far side lunar landing contract, this capstone mission that'll allow us to finish that program. And I will build another one of those that we just launched. Yep, no qualms about the Looney 3. Let's just build one. Still gaining funds. So next time, hopefully we'll finish that program and I don't know if we can pick up something else. We'll deal with that next time. We landed on the moon, and we will hopefully also test out our space plane finally on just a normal flight. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.